Back to serve for Hawaii, Emily Maeda. with this young player, 6'1 sophomore, number 10. So they cannot believe the transformation from her freshman season to this year. It's amazing how much you grow from your freshman to sophomore year. You're not as scared, you have friends on campus, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, and now you can just play volleyball. And they're gonna call a touch. And Sorensen again, number 10 for Utah State, gets the touch, gets the point. Utah State is doing such a good job of taking advantage of Hawaii's errors, and that is the key. I think a lot of teams don't take advantage, so they just lose these matches in three. But if you take advantage, you can at least take a set off. And the touch, and it goes back to Hawaii. Both teams have shown some very solid defense. She does such a good job of getting under that ball. She uses her entire body to get under it so she can pop it up high in the middle of the court. Yeah, that was Christine Morrill for Utah State. Hey! How about the block for Utah State right now? The Rainbow Wahine not in system. And Mafua is trapping her hitters. So she's making that set. It's going to the right place, but it's a little too low and inside. She needs to open it up for her hitters to be able to get behind it and swing. It's a very good point. She's really allowing those blockers to read every single set, every single play. But they get it back on this one, another tie. Back and forth. This is the third match, road match for Hawaii. They've been out traveling. Had a win at Idaho, had a win at Boise State. Jocelyn White. Danielson right into the double block. That time off the end just a little bit. Utah State is proving that they're a great blocking team. They're doing such a good job of waiting on their jump, getting out together, touching hip to hip as blockers. So when they go up, they're closing off that area of the court. So there's nowhere to go but in the block or out of bounds. Both of these two teams ranked nationally in blocking. 11th in the nation is Hawaii. 16th in the nation in blocks is Utah State. And right now, that's what's keeping them in this. Substitutions for Dave Shoji's team. He's going to talk to his big gun, Kanani Danielson. Just not quite working for her right now. When you're taking that many swings, you're bound to have a bad set or a bad match. And that one dribbles over. Point Hawaii. It's just about the halfway point in the volleyball season. When we come back, Kelly will tell us her candidate for National Player of the Year. 15 14 Hawaii up in this one. Welcome back, Kanani Danielson from Hawaii, the 2009 WAC Player of the Year, and for good reason. Defense, offense, the great hops, just an all-around spectacular athlete, and a, a player that's definitely up for Candidate of the Year, especially from Kelly's candidates. She is having a phenomenal year, and I said earlier, she has stepped into that leadership role, so not only is she playing well, but she's she's a leader for this great Hawaii team. You see Alex Kleiman for Stanford, a senior. I feel like she's been playing forever, and I have loved watching her mature into this amazing outside hitter, such a dominant force. Brooke Delano out of Nebraska, a great middle blocker. She has a ton of shots. She's a great weapon for them. And Kelly Murphy, who you'll be seeing on Wednesday night, she's an outside hitter, setter for them. Just a great offensive weapon, able to play really high above the net. Such a dominant force for Florida this year. Well, I agree. That I think Kelly Murphy in particular stands out to me, that kind of player. Right now, Utah State is standing out the ninth tie this set. As they get that last point, neither team has had more than a two-point lead in this one. Well, and you see, there's so many errors for both teams offensively, and they have to clean it up a bit so that one team can take control of this ball game. Liz MacArthur gets a shot right back at her. The block for Hawaii just waiting on her. Emily Hartog, and there you see Danny Mafua, senior setter. Right at it. 
Morris, Michelle Weber, number one, the 6'3 freshman. Dave Shoji said it's kind of been a roller coaster ride. He's got two freshmen that he's had in the starting lineup, but they're making progress. But as a freshman, to be starting for a team like Hawaii, that takes a lot. You don't get to act like a freshman when you're starting for this kind of team. You have to step in and act like you're a junior, senior, and have that court awareness and that maturity level to hang. And Chantil Satelli off the block and out of bounds. It's going to go to Hawaii. And you see Hawaii up 18-15. And it's by very slim chance that they're up here. They're making a ton of errors. Kanani was hitting zero into that last timeout. And so that's really a matter of their passing and digging. They're not opening up their offense because their passing and digging is very poor right now. A lot of great volleyball coming your way Wednesday night. Women's college volleyball continues on ESPNU with two matches. First at 7 Eastern, catch an SEC showdown as the South Carolina Gamecocks face the number one Florida Gators. And then at 9 Eastern, the number two Nebraska Cornhuskers face Big 12 rival number 10 Texas. Don't miss a set server smash Wednesday night women's college volleyball on ESPNU. And both of those will be very exciting. What Florida has been able to do, number one in the nation, but that Big 12 matchup should be quite the matchup. I'm so excited to see that match. And I, I, I think it's very interesting seeing Florida on top this year. I think this has been something in the making over the years. And these seniors on this team have just been ready to take over and take the lead of the country. And then you see Nebraska and Texas. That is such an awesome matchup because both teams are so solid. They're good all the way around. Offense, defense, you name it. They have experienced players that are doing a great job of leading this year. Absolutely. Great matchups. And the serve off the net. But that's OK because Hawaii takes that point. Back to serve, it was Elizabeth Kaihue, their senior libero. Here in rally scoring, and we're allowed to have the serve hit the net. Double block up, but out of bounds, point of Utah State. Utah State seems very composed. Hawaii can come in, be a physical team, be a, a team that can kind of make a step back, get out of your game. But right now, Utah State's playing, I think, the way they'd like to. They they did a great job of scouting Hawaii, I think. And not only are they focusing on their side of the net, but they're focusing on what Hawaii does well, and they're containing it pretty well so far in this match. Jocelyn White kept that one alive for Utah State, but it looks like an easy one. And wow, the high flyer there, Chantil Satelli. 5'10", junior. She got every bit of this one. What a great angle. I love watching Satelli. She is an average size player, but she gets up there. She sees the court and the openings in that block, and she's a high flyer. Gets up there and swings away. But you'll see her later in the match mix in some tips and shots. She's a really smart player. She's got volleyball in her blood as her mom played for Dave Shoji. Was part of their back-to-back -back championships in 82 and 83. Point is out and goes to Hawaii. Timeout. As Hawaii has extended their lead, and this is a team that has dominated since entering the WAC conference. They've had 14 WAC championships in a row. And last season, at the tournament, it was Hawaii and New Mexico State. This is a team that had a couple of graduating seniors, had a couple of key players, Anelli Kubi Otonero and Amber Kaufman. Otonero, an All-American, and Kaufman. She is one of the records. best middles Absolutely. I have ever seen. Kaufman was amazing, and that was a huge loss for them. But Hewitt has stepped in this year and really taken on that role. And obviously, Kanani Danielson has done such a good job of taking a lot onto herself. When you see what they've done, they've won their last 33 WAC matches, and they've swept their last eight opponents. So dominance, no doubt and what they've done since they've entered WAC play. They really don't let anyone into the match. They take control from beginning to end, and that's why it's just uncharacteristic for them to come into this match and look uncomfortable and make all of those errors early because usually they're starting out strong and they're finishing strong. But I think that that 
is a lot of Utah State coming out with confidence and excitement and energy. Well, most coaches will tell you it's all about ball control and starting off, Utah State has, has been doing just that. Hawaii has had their struggles, but they're little by little extending their lead. Both teams have relied heavily on the block here in this one, and that time it was Michelle Waver, number one, getting a hand on it. Liz MacArthur has been kind of quiet. Jocelyn White off the tape. Waver had to go up and over the block, had to readjust, and just wide point Utah State. And that was a tough set push to the outside, and she wasn't able to get on top of the ball. She was kind of leaning to the side. It's important to get your feet around the ball so you can get up and make a good swing at the ball. Astle with the joust at the net. And Utah State off the block, down the line. Point Utah State. This one a little bit off as MacArthur had to adjust on that. Chelsea Fowles serving it up. Weber and the up by Morrill. And that set way off. Nothing Sorensen could do. Point Hawaii. Here's her, where Hawaii has to close it out. If you give Utah State any momentum whatsoever, they're going to run with it. And they don't necessarily need to win that first set, but just a little momentum going into the second one is something that Hawaii just doesn't want to deal with here. Passes off to Fowles. Can't get it. And now Hawaii, one point from taking set number one. Emily Maeda, 5'6", sophomore, back to serve. Fouls, keeps it up. Moral, rather. Danielson takes a little bit off. Free ball to Hawaii. Kapua to Danielson, that one goes in and set number one goes to Hawaii. She may not play well in the entire first set, but if you want to finish something, give her the ball. That's who you go to. So Hawaii, a slow start for that player right there, Kanani Danielson, but when you want the big finish, get it to her. Hawaii up one nothing.